Style Hall is a global marketing services and media company with a flair for storytelling. We were founded in 2011 uh, by Stephanie Borski, who was a Saks Fifth Avenue uh, CMO, uh, who saw an opportunity um, in bringing brands together with um, audiences through influencers, influencers who had uh, extensive reach, uh, a passionate following uh, with audiences that could be converted into, into sales. The influences that we select are based on an uh, enormous amount of data uh, 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 and analysis. Um, we then create those stories and put them together with the influencer to come up with some really strong storytelling. Engagement is a very important metric um, and we're hearing a lot, uh, especially now with Facebook and um, the reconfiguration of the algorithm and Facebook news. Um, it's very much now about um, you know, friends, family, groups um, who are deeply passionate about a particular subject. Um, engagement is, and storytelling um, um, is much more than just a like. Um, it's, it's writing about it, it's, it's spending some time um, advocating this or that. Engagement is a very important factor because it relays emotion or affinity. Uh, emotions are everything. Brand love. Um, you know, if you are warm to to something and a brand, then you're more likely to um, to be influenced, and, and perhaps your behaviour, your buying habits, may also be influenced as a result of that. So, um, brand love, engagement. Um, these, you know, are very much aligned. Um, we have now um, uh, metrics that will um, uh, target that and isolate that in very, very accurate ways and we'll be able to segment audiences out there and then align those with whatever brand um, that we're um, working in partnership with. One of the interesting areas I find is with influencers in premium production and in original series. Uh, we're seeing a move towards in Europe and the US and we're hopeful of um, emulating that success here in Asia Pacific where we're able to embed influencers into scripted dramas, into romance, into comedies, uh, into um, scripted series uh, where we're able to take an audience from uh, the social world into a digital series on YouTube or whatever platform it might be. So for example, um, Relationship Status, which now is in its third season in the US, season of, uh, third season for Verizon Go 90. Um, it's a, a dramedy. Uh, it follows um, the lives of communities in uh, Los Angeles and New York, um, and it embeds influencers in this 12-part series. And I think that's a really fascinating way and opens up all kinds of creative ways of integrating brands into some really strong, uh, immersive storytelling experiences. Vanity was another one with Maybelline uh, where we were able to embed a different influence in each episode. Um, the product, uh, the Maybelline um, eye palette, uh, wasn't so much featured in the actual content and the drama itself, which was a little devil wears Prada type uh, murder intrigue set in the fashion house. Um, the product placement was on the social platform that the influencer um, was, was from, as it were. They would talk about that product and that look that they achieved in episode three or episode five, whatever it was. Hey guys, you saw me on Vanity, now I'm gonna show you how I achieved that look. So it was a wonderful way of, of relaying the benefits and, and, and what, the, you know, what the product was without it being an intrusive aspect of the show itself. And it was a wonderful way of integrating the, an influencer into a, a very credible premium piece of, of content. In, importantly now, the best uh, and most effective way of, of integrating influencers uh, into content is always on type approaches. Um, rather than a singular campaign, a one-off. Um, we, we, we still find, uh, particularly with, with clients, with brands who are a little new to the space, um, that they feel that using a, an influencer one month and then you know, it's as a one-off for a particular um, small campaign and then um, that's it for the next six months. Um, the results of that are not nearly as, as, as um, conclusive. Uh, not nearly as strong, as effective than an always-on campaign where you are using a certain number of influencers who you've clearly identified as having a very close affinity with that brand and you work with them throughout the year on various forms of content um, creation. Um, that's where you have much more, much stronger engagement, that's where you come up with some very strong creative ideas and ways of working with the influencer and aligning influencer with the brand than this one-off approach, um, which quite frankly doesn't come up with the 
the results. Um, often then the brand feels that they're you know, dissatisfied. Um, so in terms of advocating uh, an approach to a, to a brand, absolutely always on should be something that's you know, very much considered rather than just a singular one-off campaign. I think it's important to realise that an influencer has a following based on their passion, um, based on their understanding of expertise in whatever it is, whether it's sports, whether it's on movies, food, travel, or, or hair care, skin care. Um, they have a following because they, these influencers are passionate about sharing that. Um, they have their own voice, they have their own identity, their own tone voice in describing that, in, in creating the content, whether it's for Instagram, whether it's for YouTube, whether it's videos, whether it's static posts, they have their own way and distinct uh, individuality, which is really important for a brand to understand and respect. Um, because the most effective way of integrating uh, an influencer into a brand campaign is where there is a natural and alignment, um, where there isn't a misfit, um, where there is a respect of what an influencer stands for, um, and you look at an influencer different from perhaps a more traditional ambassador, uh, where there's much more of a spoon feeding of a script or, or a written commentary, as opposed to an influencer describing and telling it in their own way. Um, of course, there are talking points. Of course, there's um, there's ways of ensuring that the brand feels um, that it's consistent with objectives um, but there also has to be a sense of some freedom um, which is hard for some brands when they feel that they have to or are used to a, a much tighter control um, but we've we've found that when when a brand um, you know has worked with, with style of all when we've worked through the whole process of selecting influences based on clear um, data and analytics um, as well as a human touch so there's a natural alignment that that influence is the right fit for that brand and then in terms of the kind of stories they create is based on business intelligence and consumer sentiment stories topics that you know consumers want to hear from that influencer um, then we're, we're, we're reaching a very 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 effective way of creating very strong storytelling uh, that can influence people and their consumer habits um, that I think is a, a very exciting um, area for, for brands to understand and that's certainly something that Star Hall spends a lot of time um, um, getting clients, prospective clients, to understand what the benefits are. Sometimes clients have worked in this space and in, in working with influencers and it's not been as satisfying um, because some agencies have looked at this as a very transactional um, affair. They've not looked after or don't see the relationship with the influencers as long term. And I think that's a very important part of the success of Star Hall is that style hall and influencers are very much entwined. It's a question that's often asked, um, you know, how do I grow my audience? You know, how do I take my audience of 1,000 to 10,000? Um, and consistently the influencers who have got very established followings have said something along the lines of, you must be doing it because you love doing this. It must be something that you're very passionate about. Um, if you start concentrating on data, on the numbers, and worrying about that, and not the actual content, not what you're posting, not what you're sharing with the audience, then you may find that you're actually sort of undermining um, you know, what, what, what possibility, what opportunities that there is in this space. You know, influencers again that I've met um, have, have, have honestly said to me, look, I, I didn't know that I was going to become this, this, this person with this mass following. I did it because I, I just love talking about, you know, sport, or I, I love talking about food, or I love talking about hair care. I, I just fell into this, and um, it's something that's natural, and it's because of that naturalness and authenticity, which is a key factor in why there is an appeal with influencers and the following that they have. It's that authenticity that um, you know uh, any would-be creator should always be aware of. They have a brand themselves. They have uh, a tone and a voice that it should it should be consistent. You know, um, and and when it comes to working with brands, they should absolutely focus on making sure they they don't undermine that 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 consistent voice. Uh, you know, it, that's what appeals to their following. Um, and that's something they have to be careful of. Millennials are, you know, are very receptive to false messages. Um, you know, they are rather cynical of the more traditional messaging from advertisers. So um, the most effective way of working with an influencer is where there is a respect from all parties concerned, particularly with brands in terms of what they're asking influencers to do. Uh, it should feel, very, it should be natural, um, uh, as natural and authentic as possible. And that's where you get the most effective results. If you try and force fit something, 
then you're likely to get um, an unrelatable piece of content and that's where you possibly get some kind of potential backlash from followers who feel that their you know their 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 influencer who they've been following has perhaps you know sort of undermined that trust and authenticity um, trust and relatability is, is key in all of this